you're seeing this, then you're one of the lucky ones. Welcome to another edition of Sports Frenzy with Coach Co. Welcome back, everybody. Hope everybody's had a great week so far. How's it going? It's been a big week for our sports. So we're going to jump right in to the recap part of the show for you guys. And we'll get that done right now. Uh, last week's show... Oh, I forgot to mention, this is episode 20. The 20th episode of Sports Frenzy is finally here. So we're at 20 episodes in to the season this year. And we're going to do the recap for you guys right now. Uh, season 8, episode 19 from last week. So here we go. The recap part of the show for you guys. Made some changes again on the... Uh, couch and stuff so hopefully uh you like we're still working on the setup guys it's all work in progress L lighting looks halfway decent tonight so that's a plus right there all right let's jump into the recap part of the show from last week for you guys, those of you who do not have the uh recap results yet here we go um we started off with college hockey for the sheets this past week and we had uh St. Norbert beating Adrian College 2-1 to one in overtime for the Harris Cup Championship. And that was also your first three-point bonus game. Uh, college hockey continued. We got Michigan um, beating Wisconsin 5-3. to three. And we have uh, Colorado... Beating Western Michigan 2-1, to one, your final score there. Minor League Hockey Action. We have the Penguins defeating the Griffins 4-2. to two. And in Walleye Action, we have the Walleye getting the win over South Carolina 4-2. <laughs> No typo there. Same exact score. NHL hockey game action. We have the Winnipeg Jets getting the win over our beloved Red Wings 4-3. to three. And then your second three-point bonus game. We have the Dallas Stars getting a win over the St. Louis Blues. In overtime, three to two. Moving into our Friday night NBA games. Or Friday, well, the first game was Friday night. We have uh, Orlando Magic getting the win over the Detroit Pistons in overtime, one fifteen to one oh six. And the Houston Rockets getting the win over the Boston Celtics in a squeaker game, 123-120. to 120. Then the L.A. Lakers get a squeaker of a win over the uh, Spurs, 116-112. to 112. Here's where things got a little tricky for you guys this week, too. Jumping into NLL lacrosse action. The uh, Mammoth get the win over the Georgia Swarm, 11-10. to And the Saskatchewan, oh, what a rush. Get the win uh, over Vancouver, 16-10. to that was NLL lacrosse action. Moving into college lacrosse action, we have uh, Valerman getting the win over Detroit Mercy, 5-1. to one. And Michigan, go Blue Boys, getting the victory over Siena. Remember, it wasn't Siena Heights, just Siena. 
13 to 7. North Carolina gets a win over St. John's 9 to 8. And uh, Mussingham gets the win over the Bulldogs 14 to 5. Ouch, that one hurts a little bit. Minor League Baseball action. Minor League, no, not Minor League, sorry. NCAA College, we got college baseball action starting. Um, Michigan gets blanked by Stanford. 7-0. Uh, to zero. The Bulldogs of Adrian get the win over Omri. Nine to five. Um, Hillsdale falls to Ballerman. Seven to three. And Sienna falls, Sienna Heights falls to Thomas University. 13 to 12 in a squeaker game. Uh, Major League Baseball preseason games. The Detroit Tigers get it done against the Miami Marlins, 8 to 3. The Philadelphia Phillies beat up on the Tampa Bay Rays pretty good, 9 to 2. And Rogers, LA Dodgers. Get it done in a squeaker of a game against the Chicago White Sox, 7-6. to six. Uh, Racing results from the past week. We have... Kevin Harvick came in number one. Kyle Busch was number two. And Kyle Larson was number three. So if you have, if you got any one of those guys in first, second, or third place, you get a point for NASCAR this week. That wraps up uh, the recap show. A little weak in the scoring department this week, guys. I noticed especially over there, well, really everybody did. I don't know if the uh, baseball, early baseball and... Uh, Especially the cross, I think, threw everybody off. So there were some pretty low scores on the Frenzy Show this week. For this week's games. Alright, before we go any farther into the show, I want to give a shout out and congratulations to our Go Blue Boys, the basketball team winning the Big Ten Championship. Go Blue! Jumped you guys up in the rankings a little bit as well. So nice job, guys. Hope to see some uh, tournament, great tournament action out of you guys. And as always, as everybody knows, that uh, when I do my brackets every year, I have Michigan winning, going all the way. So Michigan going all the way. We'll have a bracket show. I might do a bracket special at some point. I don't know. I might. We'll see what happens. Depends on... If I can find the time for it or not, we'll do something that way for you guys, maybe. Just to let you know who's Coach Cole going to put his bracket. But uh, maybe even we'll do a little something. Uh, it's possible I'll do a little something for you guys just to um, kind of like the other shows do. We'll, uh, we'll do a little something where I at least let you guys know who's in the brackets or who made the shows. That's coming up this weekend on the 11th. To see who will be playing in March Madness. All right, on to this week's show. This is Season 8, Episode 20. Welcome to the Frenzy. And let's get started with this week's games. I decided uh, I'd start off with some baseball for you guys this week. So we're going to do some college, start the season off, or start off the week with some college baseball. And I, got, I got, actually got quite a few games on here. Got to find the cards. There they are. 
And uh, welcoming to the live show, looks like we have uh, Jessica joining us right now. And hey, my former co-host, partner in crime, Jamie Rose, checking in over there for the uh, Facebook live show. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you for joining us. As we get into this week's picks for you guys, yes, Jamie Rose, we will be talking about uh, this weekend there is March Madness going on, so that will be coming up. Um, as far as definitely looking forward to some March Madness this year. All right, but we're going to kick off the night with some college baseball. On our first game of the week, we have the three wins and seven losses. Uh, Michigan, go blue. Hail to the victors, go blue. And they're traveling on the road this week to Lipscomb University. <coughs> uh, Michigan's record was three wins and seven losses. I don't think I mentioned that. And Lipscomb's record is three wins and four losses. This is a Friday game, or tonight game for those watching the recorded version of the show. Uh, 4 p.m. So... This game will be on before some of you, or this game will be being played. It's not on, but I don't, I don't think they show the college games anywhere that I'm aware of. Oh, uh, so it starts at 4 p.m. Uh, let's see, Jamie Rose weighing in. <laughs> yes, we also, uh, Jamie Rose, has, as you guys can't see his writing, but uh, if you're on Facebook Live, you can interact with the show um, by writing in. I can see a lot of your responses on there. So sometimes you'll hear me commenting, and you guys are probably, the people watching the re, uh, recorded version are going, what the heck is he talking about? It's not the voices in my head, I promise. <laughs> it is actually people who actually write in. And Jamie Rose says he is looking very, very forward to the uh, pay-per-view that we have on here this week, too. Yes, there is a WWE pay-per-view to give you guys a heads up, which usually means um, I might not necessarily have the sheets done Sunday night. So for my Laura Havlin friends, um, you might not be getting your results back until Tuesday morning. We'll see what happens. It just depends. But uh, we're looking for Jamie Rose is looking forward to the WWE Fastlane pay-per-view, and then he says, not. I would have to agree with him, but we will get to that in a little bit. But uh, first up, we have the three wins and seven losses, Michigan, and the three wins and four losses, Lipscomb, playing in baseball action. And you guys know who I got. I've got the Go Blue Boys. Go Blue. Lost my pen. There it is. Next game I have scheduled for you guys is the, uh, is still in college baseball action, and it is the three win or I'm sorry, two wins and four losses, St. Joe's, St. Joseph's, and they are traveling this week to Western Michigan who has five wins and four losses. This is a Saturday game, 10 a.m. I've got Western Michigan for the win. Next up, we have Eastern Michigan for you guys. Still in uh, college baseball. Eastern Michigan has three wins and eight losses. And they're on the road traveling to Oklahoma State. Who has six wins and four losses. Um...
This is a Friday night game at 5 p.m. I like Eastern Michigan. I know they don't have the best record. I'm going with Eastern Michigan. I'm going to go with, been a fan of Eastern Michigan. So, going with them. And yes, I know the thing that makes it hard with them is they have the same, their, their colors are so similar to MSU. So you clearly have to, if you're going to wear any like, uh, you know, uh, wear any of their gear. You have to clearly make sure it's marked so people don't give you a hard time and go, oh, you're wearing Michigan State's colors. This next game is continuing on with uh, NCAA baseball. And we have Central Michigan. Central Michigan has two wins, seven losses, and one tie. They're on the road traveling to USF. And USF has seven wins and five losses. This is a Friday night game at 7 p.m. I think Central's in trouble here. I've got to go with USF for the win. Um, next up, we have the we have the Toledo Rockets. They have three wins and seven losses, and they're traveling this week to Georgia, who happens to be pretty darn good by these by this record. Um, Georgia has seven wins and four losses. This is a Friday night game at six p.m. Georgia's pretty darn good. I gotta go Georgia. Next up we have uh, Coach Gordy and the boys starting off a tough season at this point. They have only two wins and ten losses. Wow. And they're traveling on the road this week to play the UIS Prairie Stars. Seven wins, three losses. This is a Saturday game at 12 p.m. I've got to go with Hillsdale. Come on, Coach Gordy and the boys. Let's get it going. We can get this done. Going Hillsdale for the win. And our last college game of the week, college uh, baseball game of the week, we have the four wins and 14 losses, Sienna Heights. And they're on the road playing the six wins and five losses. Spring Arbor. Spring Arbor has six wins and five losses. This is a Friday game, 12.30 p.m. I'm going to Spring Arbor for the win. I got some softball games on here for you this week, too, guys. College softball. And uh, our first college softball game features Hillsdale in action. They have two wins and two losses. And they are traveling to Barry University. Never heard of these guys at all. Barry University has 8 wins and 13 losses. This is a Friday night game at 2 p.m. 
I gotta go Barry. They have a better record, even though I have no idea who the heck they are. Excuse me. Our next team in uh, softball action for you guys is the Stony Brook Seawolves. Stony Brook Seawolves. They have four wins and six losses. And they're playing the world's greatest college team. That's right, the Michigan Wolverines. Go Blue! Michigan has 13 wins and 6 losses. Our Lady uh, Michigan teams have been doing pretty darn good lately. This is a Friday night game. 3.45 p.m. I got the Go Blue Boys. Go, or, <laughs> go Blue Boys. The Go Blue Girls this time around. Go Blue. I saw this really cool uh, girl softball shirt and on the, um, I believe it's MDEN's website, and it says, yes, I do throw like a girl. And it was a really cool uh, Michigan girl softball shirt. And uh, guys, if you've never, if you, you laugh about this, or some of you that might not know about it so much, if you watch softball, oh my gosh. The way they wind up their arm, yeah, they're pitching underhanded. But the way they wind up their arm and they throw is ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. The speed and power they have from throwing underarm like that, it's, it's crazy. Um, and our last, is this our last softball game? Yes, it is. Last softball game this week. We have Western Michigan, who has six wins and ten losses. And they're playing Central Connecticut, who has three wins and eight losses. This is a Friday night game, 11 p.m. I got to go Central Connecticut. No, wait a minute. Let me look at this again. No, I'm not going Central Connecticut. That's crazy talk. I'm going Western Michigan for the win. You'll notice, guys... Because scores were so low last week, I stayed away from the cross action for you this week because I'm not sure really how many of you <laughs> are as familiar with lacrosse. So for this week, I stayed away from it to maybe, uh, oh, excuse me, maybe to uh, help you guys, if nothing more, help you guys get your spirit back a little bit by increasing your scores some with some other games. So we're jumping into NBA basketball action. I got a few more games on here this week than I normally do for them as of late. But our first game for NBA action, uh, the, I, the first two games I chose are Friday night games, so that's accurate. It's the third one, it's not. Um, our first Friday night basketball game we have the 21 wins and 41 losses the Chicago Bulls and they are traveling to and playing against the 29 wins and 34 losses that's right guys it's do -do 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 Detroit basketball uh, this is a Friday night game 7 p.m. and there are two channels you can watch this one on you can watch it on WGN, which is, you're going to get the uh, Chicago Bulls point of view. Or you can stay tuned into FSD, where you get the, uh, the Detroit point of view with our guys down there. So, But there's just two options for you guys. 
double of the channels that's going to be on this week. And of course you guys know I've got D -d 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 Detroit Basketball for the win. Our next game is a team that I absolutely cannot stand at all. That's right. We have the Cleveland Cavaliers. They have 36 wins and 26 losses. They also have that guy by the name of LeBron who thinks he's the God's gift to basketball. He is not. Um, they are playing the LA Clippers who have 34 wins and 28 losses. This is a Friday night game, 10.30 p.m. You can watch it if you have cable or have the NBA TV, which uh, is a channel that is on cable. Or I think you can get it on your computer, too. But, uh, yeah, I am not a Cavaliers fan. I don't care what their record is. I've got, I'm going to give it to the L.A. Clippers for the win. Coincidentally, some people was, would debate it with me. Lots of people wouldn't even know this. But LeBron James will never measure up to the legends of yesteryears. Uh, one of those being Larry Bird. <laughs> he will never be a Larry Bird. Or he'll never be pretty much anybody that was on that... Uh, Boston Celtics team during that era. And again, people will debate me and dispute me on that, but that's because you ne the new generation has no idea the talent that was in the old days of basketball. Be I wish I could I wish they still played like that. <laughs> All right. Let's see, your last uh, NBA game this week is the, it is your first three-point bonus game. That's right, we got to do the song. Because it's your first three, three-point bonus game. It's your first three, three-point bonus game. Come on, everybody, sing it with me now. It's your first three point bonus game yes it is that's right I thought this game was going to be a pretty good game this week the records are fairly close on this one we have the San Antonio Spurs one of the most team oriented basketball teams I've ever seen in my entire life it's still um Still reminds me of, they, you know, they remind me a little bit of the golden era of, of basketball. They have 36 wins and 27 losses. They're on the road this week. They're playing the Oklahoma City Thunder. And they have 37 wins and 28 losses. This game, guys, is a Saturday night game. On, uh, at, it's on at 8.30. And you can tune in to watch this game on regular TV because it is on your ABC network. I didn't tell you guys who I got, but I think most of you that know me know that I like those San Antonio Spurs. I didn't put any. I haven't put any college uh, basketball on here last couple weeks. I'm kind of more or less waiting for the uh, March Madness tournaments now and the tournaments. Um, there really isn't at this point. When I was looking, there wasn't really anything worth game wise putting on there at the moment. So we'll be getting back into action next week, hopefully with our uh, March Madness games. Hopefully, I can find some good ones that will go on our schedule here. Um, depending on when I start working on next week's schedule. Excuse me. Got a little bit of tires tonight. 
Um, but so we're moving into, we moved in uh, from uh, baseball to some basketball. Now, now we're moving into some hockey. Like I said, I try to stay away from uh, lacrosse this week for you guys. <laughs> so we're going to move into hockey action. And our first game this week in hockey, this is minor league hockey action we're talking. We have the 31 wins, 21 losses, 7 overtime losses, your Grand Rapid Griffins. And this may sound like a repeat to you guys, and it, it is. This is the same game as we had last week. But this time, uh, Grand Rapids is on the road, playing the Wilkes Bar Scranton Penguins. Penguins have 33 wins, 17 losses, six overtime losses. Um, did I give you the Griffins record? 31 wins, 21 losses, seven overtime losses. Uh, this is a Friday night game, and the puck drops at 7.05. And guess what, guys? Guess what? This is your second. That's right. These are so close this week. Your second three-point bonus game. Three points. It's your three point bonus game. Yeah. Griffins have had it tough, but I see they've been kind of battling back. And they are your defending champions. I'm going to go with Grand Rapid Griffins. I still believe. And no, Jamie Rose, I still have not got my Grand Rapids Griffins gear. I'm going to work on that. Griffins for the win. Um, your final minor league hockey game we have this week is the Quad City Mallards. The Quad City Mallards. They have 20 wins, 34 losses, and 4 overtime losses. But it doesn't really matter who they're playing because they are up against the 40 wins, 15 losses, 4 overtime losses. That's right, they are playing your Toledo. Walleye! This is a... The puck drops at uh, 7.15. And I got the Toledo Walleye for the win. And we've got some college hockey for you guys. Up next... Um, as you would notice, this first game, you're going, huh? These guys are UW Stevens Point. It's the University of Wisconsin Stevenson's Point. I didn't put the whole thing on there, so it looks like it's the University of Wisconsin. It's not actually the University of Wisconsin. It's the U University of Wisconsin Stevenson's Point. And they have 20 wins, 5 losses, and 3 overtime losses. They are traveling to and playing against... The Adrian Bulldogs. Adrian has 24 wins and 5 losses. This is a Friday game, and I believe the puck drops at um, 7 p.m. Get on out there and support your Adrian Bulldogs. Go Bulldogs! Ha, ha, ha. 
Ha <laughs> This next game is a rivalry game, and it is our bonus week for three-point bonus games. So this is your bonus three-point bonus game. And it is Michigan Go Blue. Michigan has 20 wins, 13 losses, and 3 overtime losses. And you guys are going to either love me or hate me for this, but it is a Michigan show. It is my show, and as far as I know, I'm not in syndication anywhere in Ohio. So, that team down below, just because this is my show, and I can do things the way I want to on my show, and I answer to nobody. That's right. I decided the team down below, not only am I not going to say their name again, not only am I not going to tell you where they're ranked, but I'm not even going to give them a logo. I don't care for these guys so much, they don't even get a logo on this show. Because it doesn't matter who they are, and nobody cares. This is a Friday night game at 7 p.m., and the Michigan boys are going to win it. Go Blue! Go Blue! Hail to the victors! Hail, hail to Michigan, the leaders and the best! That's right. Go Blue! Ha ha ha! No logo for you, team down below. And that was your bonus, three-point bonus game. Puck drops at 7 p.m. And your final college hockey game I have for you this week is an NCHC quarterfinals. And it is Friday at 8.07 p.m. is when the puck drops for this game. We have Western Michigan. 15 wins, 17 losses, 2 overtime losses. And they're up against Minnesota Duluth. They have 19 wins, 14 losses, and 3 overtime losses. Even though Minnesota Duluth has a little bit better record, I'm going Western Michigan for the win. Go Western Michigan. And that was your NCHA quarterfinals game. Um, regular season um, NHL hockey action, guys. We got the struggling... Detroit Red Wings, 26 wins, 29 losses, and 10 overtime losses. Wow, these guys are really struggling this year. They're up against the Columbus Blue Jackets, who have 33 wins, 28 losses, 5 overtime losses. Uh, this is a Friday night game. 7 p.m. is when the puck drops. And you can watch it on FSD. And we need to give the Detroit Red Wings a chant. And give them all the help we can, folks. Because they need it. Let's go, Red Wings! Let's go, Red Wings! Let's go, Red Wings! Come on, Wings! Get it done. I've got the Detroit Red Wings for the win. Your final hockey game we have for you this week are those, are those St. Louis Blues. 
the St. Louis Blues coming into this game, and they have 36 wins, 25 losses. But you can't forget that they also have five overtime losses. <clears throat> that was trash was my voice. They're traveling to L.A. to play the L.A. Kings. They have 36 wins, 25 losses, and 5 overtime losses. Guys, I could have easily have had... <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. See, there it goes. I could have easily had another three-point bonus game for you guys this week. But we don't want to go too, too crazy on those. And I've kind of been, uh, I haven't really found, I'm setting up these schedules, I haven't really found anything worthy of squeaker game status. But you know what? This game might be a close one. Their records are identical. So, unofficially we'll call this the squeaker game. A squeaker game. But I still think St. Louis Blues will come out on top in this game. I'm sorry guys, I gotta refresh the vocal cords a little bit here. Probably looks and sounds so awful on camera, especially when I'm not actually promoting a product. I'm just drinking ice cold water in a bottle. <laughs> so there you go. Um, but yes, I went with the uh, St. Louis, the St. Louis Blues for the win. All right, uh, again, just to mention, uh, this is Major League Baseball games, but these games mean absolutely nothing right now. They're preseason games. They're basically the way for, uh, um, you know, they're not even playing around here. The, most of the teams are down in Florida or California or wherever it's uh, hot and they don't have a lot of snow or they don't have any snow. Um, preseason games, you can watch all preseason games on the, if you have cable, or even if you don't have cable, you can probably get the MLB network on any, almost anything anymore, um, except regular TV, of course. Um, but these are all, these games are all on the MLB network and basically they're just a way to get, um, teams organized and, uh, figure out who's going where, uh, who's going to make the main roster, who's going to go to the minor leagues, uh, cause there's several, a lot of these, uh, major league teams have like several levels of minor league affiliates. So, um, you know, Detroit for an example, they're, um, you know, they have uh, the uh, they have their affiliations, and a lot of them are uh, around here um, in. Uh, uh, but they have they have several teams. If they got a guy, a new guy they signed or whatever, they might sign him, send him to one of their main minor league teams, and then bring him up when they get better. But we also know this is a completely rebuilding season for Tigers and several other teams. So this is just a way for the coaches and everybody to see who they got, where they want them, who's going to earn a spot on the main roster, and who's going to go elsewhere. But I put them on here just for fun um, to give us some games. And I'm, I'm excited about baseball returning this year, so I'm looking forward to some baseball action. And our first preseason game is a Friday night game. Um... Well, this game will be on before uh, most of us are even out of school. 1.05 p.m. But they'll show the replay later on that night, too, probably, if it's worth watching. We have the four wins, seven losses, one overtime loss. Or, no, I'm sorry, not one overtime loss. One tie. So it's a tie. Four wins, seven losses, one tie. And again, um, you can't even, I have to actually, for these records, they don't even keep track of them on the website. I have to actually go through and count the games to see who won and who lost in each category. Because if you go to their uh, actual records, 
they don't, they're not even doing that yet. So, um, so according to my calculations and my uh, counting correctly, we have four wins, seven losses, and uh, one tie for the New York Mets. And they are traveling, or they're not traveling anywhere because they're all in the same area. They're playing the Detroit Tigers, who have six wins, five losses, and one tie. And again, this is a Friday game, 1 o'clock, um, MLB Network. I have not checked out for our Detroit games yet. I haven't checked out to see if they're on the radio. I'm betting they're on the radio, too. You might be able to find the preseason games on... Um, uh, you can get the radio channel for that and listen to your games live uh, on the internet. But it costs you. Um, Major League Baseball charges you a fee for that. I think it's like $3 a month or something like that. It's not super expensive to get, uh, to get access to um, all the games also. Or you can just play an old, break out an old radio and listen to them on the radio. Regular, regular, regular radio. Um, I think 97.1, the ticket carries uh, Detroit games. And who else? There's a couple of AM channels that carry Detroit Tiger games. So 97.1, um comes in the best that's an fm channel so that would be your best bet for catching tigers games anyway uh was enough of my rambling i got the tigers for the win um your second preseason baseball game has the pittsburgh pirates they have two wins six losses and th and three ties they're playing against the Philadelphia Phillies, and that's interesting. I really flubbed up on that one. I didn't even put their count their record or put their record down. But hey, this is a Saturday game at 1:05 p.m. And again, you can watch it on the MLB Network. I'm sorry, guys, I don't have a record for you. But I'm going with Philadelphia Phillies anyway. Your last baseball game of the week that I have on schedule is a Friday game, 3.05 p.m. You can watch on the Major League uh, Baseball Network. And that's the Kansas City Royals, who have six wins, Two losses and one tie. And they are playing the six wins, five losses, and one tie. The L.A. Roger Schoonover Dodgers. Um, 3.05 is this game. Coincidentally, guys... Kansas City Royals is the last team to play the Detroit Tigers at the old Tiger Stadium. Which now has been uh, completely and totally wiped out and is owned by Detroit Pal. And they uh, put... Um, they t completely demolished what was left of, well, there wasn't anything left of Old Tiger Stadium anyway, but except for the actual field flagpole and the baseball diamond, and they destroyed all that too. So now there's absolutely nothing left out there from Old Detroit, uh, Old Detroit Tiger Stadium. It's Detroit Pal. It's been repaved over with all artificial turf and nonsense and uh yeah i feel really bad about that i don't like that one bit <laughs> anyway enough on that rant too um i'm going with rogers la dodgers for the victory I 
I don't even know if you can go out there for free anymore like you could when it was uh, Tiger Stadium and uh, when the uh, Detroit uh, the Nevins Field grounds crew were out there taking care of old Tiger Stadium, what was left of the turf and the grass and everything. And uh, I'm, I'm I'm just going to say it again. I'm blessed and uh, very blessed that... Uh, me and uh, my buddy Jason Boring and uh, and Chris Bull got to go out to that field um, one last time before it became what it is now. So uh, we got to stand on the original field, and I got to stand out in the field of dreams where uh, several legends over the years uh, walked, ran, or had home runs before they turned it into what it is now. So... Very, uh, very blessed about that. Um, coincidentally, if you're a fan of the Navins Field grounds crew, um, they are working on a new project now, another um, abandoned ballpark in the Detroit area. It was an old, it's an old um, Negro League um uh, baseball field and hand handstrom uh stay tuned we'll keep up to date on what they're up to because they're keeping those grounds clear now and uh gonna restore help restore that diamond and they actually have the blessing of the city and the councils and so they're getting help with this one unlike what they had going on in detroit but that's all i have on that part about uh baseball so just my little thoughts on how I felt about the final run minutes of uh, Detroit Tiger Stadium being demolished and completely revamped into something what it is now. Uh, moving right along, let's go into... Uh, we got... Um, I forgot to look up this week's race. We'll get you some race details here. On what's going on for this week NASCAR action before we Go to NASCAR's official site. Um, let me get this week's schedule. All right, this weekend's race. Is the Ticket Guardian 500. These races have stranger and stranger names every week. Ticket Guardian 500. And it, uh, is on Sunday, 3.30 p.m. is when the race starts. Uh, let me see if this is... Can get some information on this race for you guys. It's at ISM Raceway. And so I'll go back here.
So that's basically all I have for you. Um, oh, it's on Fox again. So Fox is the uh, network it's on. And I'm going with uh, Kyle Busch is who I have for my racer. And Again, I have not completely updated the sheets yet, so just scratch off Dale Earnhardt Jr. because he's no longer racing. Um, there's also the free spot to mark in if there's some other driver you like or want. And again, uh, we have a WWE pay-per-view this week for you guys, and it is the Fast Lane pay-per-view. That's right. WWE pay-per-view action once again. Uh, road. This is the SmackDown pay-per-view, and the road to WrestleMania goes through Fast Lane as WrestleMania is quickly approaching us. So, let's see uh, what we got going on for as far as Fastlane goes. Um, oops. WWE. Fastlane. Taking a minute to load the, the WWE pay-per-view. So here's what we got. Your main number one match of the night at Fastlane is a six-way dance for the title. Not quite sure how they're doing that yet. But uh, basically, I've put on the sheets for you guys. Just circle the guy that you think will win the match. Um, we have Baron Corbin versus Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles. Versus John Cena, versus Sami Zayn, versus Dolph Ziggler. Um, not only can you win the title in this match, but it also will get you to WrestleMania. Um, I don't know, I love AJ Styles as the champion, but I somehow got a feeling... That we're going to see uh, John Cena get the win. Because I don't see John Cena missing WrestleMania. I just don't see that happening. So that's who I'm giving that one to. Uh, let's see what other interesting matches we have. Uh, the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, The Usos, versus The New Day. Um, again, these guys have faced each other a few times already. I'm not sure why they're facing each other again, but hey. I, didn't have, I don't have that match on here. I'm just telling you guys a little bit about what's going on. Uh, SmackDown Women's Champion, Charlotte Flair versus Ruby Riot. No, I don't really see that one being a big deal. Uh, next match I put on here that might be okay is for the United States Championship. And it is the U.S. title holder, current title holder, Bobby Roode. Glorious! I will be there! I will be there! Glorious! Those who know WWE know that's his theme song. We're not allowed to play any... Uh, Music on the show. Apparently, they'll censor it. So, yeah, I don't do that anymore. 
But uh, you got Bobby Roode taking on Randy Orton. I don't see Bobby Roode losing his title. I'm giving it to Bobby Roode. Um, another match we have on here and on the sheet, I completely spell. Oh, I didn't completely spell it wrong. I just left out. <laughs> Left out a couple letters. Huh. I guess I kind of misspelled it. S H I N U K E. We have the other match that I have on here for you guys Shinsuke Nakamura. Coming from Japan, he's one. This guy, uh, if you've never seen his Japanese wrestling footage, you should go ahead and pull it up if you can find it on YouTube or whatever. Uh, their style of wrestling in Japan is a whole completely different crazy style compared to uh, WWE style of wrestling. So I don't feel like anything he could any he could take any kind of punishment in WWE, and it's not going to phase him compared to what he did new in Japan wrestling. And he is taking on uh, Rusev. Whose new big thing is Rusev Day, which is absolutely ridiculously dumb in my opinion. I've got uh, Shinsei Nakamura for the win. Your other match is uh, Becky Lynch versus Na Na Naomi sorry, versus Natalia and Carmella. So it's Becky Lynch and Naomi versus Na Natalia and Carmella. That's going to be a yawner. Oh, and that was your last match. So, yeah, it's going to be uh, an interesting pay-per-view. Not. But, like I told you before, with these pay-per-views, um, that'll probably be on uh, just late enough where I might not get you guys as, um, get the sheets completely graded until uh, Tuesday. We'll see. I got finished for you the last pay per view. We'll see if I can get it done or not. Anyway, that's all we have for you as far as that goes. I am going to go to our Sports Frenzy page on Facebook and see if there's any information I have for you guys, real quick. Uh, there's a lot of movement going on in the NFL right now. Uh, Patriots have released. Uh, Martellus Bennett to free agency. Um, there was a trade alert. Uh, New York Giants and Rams have made a deal. Oh, that's good. I don't even need to tell what the deal is. Um, Seattle Seahawks intend to release Richard Sherman. That's huge news. Um, NASCAR fans, Kevin Harvick getting penalized for something he did in the race this past week. Um, uh, so his penalty, I don't even know exactly what he did, but he's lost uh, 20 driver and 20 owner points. He loses 7 playoff points. And he lo his crew chief, Rodney Childers, has been fined $50,000. And his car chief, Robert Smith, has been suspended for two races. So that's, I, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, you can get more details and everything else about Sports Frenzy that we're talking about here on the Sports Frenzy Facebook page. Sometimes you can find it on our Twitter page too, at Sports Frenzy 1. Or if you just want to rewatch this video, you can go to the uh uh, Coach Co Sports Frenzy One YouTube page. WWE NXT breaking news: uh, They're debuting a new championship at N NXT Takeover New Orleans. 
So there'll be a new belt to introduce, I'm assuming. Um, the Detroit Red Rings. Saturday night, we'll be playing in the alumni game. We've got Kevin Miller, Mike Newble, Mickey Redman, uh, Joe Kitkor, Darren McCoy, Brett Feddy, Brett Fredick, George Bowerman, Greg Malik, Brian Samlinski, Eric Wright, Wayne Presley, Sergey Samanov, uh, Kip Miller, and John Argonick so far. Uh, this game will take place Saturday, March 10th at 1245, 12.45 p.m. to start uh, Hockey Night in Brighton. Um, not only has the NFL dropped Papa John's pizza from their official as their official pizza, but Peyton Manning has also sold his share of the franchise. So I don't know what's going on over there at Papa John's, but it sounds like things are a little crazy at the moment. Congratulations to Jeff Gordon, who is being nominated to the... Uh, NASCAR Hall of Fame. Uh, Jimmy Graham is supposedly reported done in Seattle. Um, one of the things they're saying about him is he could end up um, be reuniting with the Saints. Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon has reportedly been uh, uh, said that he is looking to try and re-sign Alberto Del Rio. Now, Alberto Del Rio has had a lot of bad things to say about WWE and trash talked. So that's an interesting, um, interesting one there. Uh, one of your first WWE WrestleMania matches has been announced, and it will be Kurt Angle, Kurt Angle, Kurt Angle, and Ronda Rousey versus Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. So that's your first blockbuster match for uh, WrestleMania. Congratulations! Another, another WWE news. Congratulations. Who's old enough to remember the legendary Hillbilly Jim? Hillbilly Jim is being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, and I say he should have been there long before now. So congratulations goes out to Hillbilly Jim. And that looks like about all I have for you guys this week. Uh, don't forget, guys, this weekend is the time change, so don't uh, forget to change your time. I know it's a pain, but when, and it makes it, it's gonna, it drives me crazy. And but don't forget about it. Make sure you're on time for school on Monday. Or you're in church on Sunday, whatever you guys do. <laughs> anyway. Get out there and have a great weekend, everyone. I hope everybody does have a great weekend. And we'll see you back here again next week, same time. Well, same night. Won't necessarily say same time. I'm the coach. Be blessed, everyone. Thank you so much for your continued love and support, letters, everything that you do to be a part of this show. I am very blessed to have you all. We'll see you guys again real soon. Take care, everybody. Good night.